the boxer coming off a ninth round dismantled destruction. I mean, epic beatdown of Earl Spence. We got him here. You know, Bernie the Boxer, how you doing, brother? What's good, family? You know who it is. You know what it is. It's yours truly. It's Bernie the Boxer. Did you miss me? Come on, uh, man. I, 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 <laughs> first of all, Come man, on, I want to say, yeah, first of all, man, thank you for tapping in, man. First of all, congratulations on that epic one-sided beatdown. I mean, I, 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 I knew y'all would win, man, but I didn't think it was going to be such a, a one-sided fight. Did you guys do a lot of research on um, Errol Spence? Like, did you already have a formula? Did you already know what you was going to do ahead of time? Definitely. You know, definitely uh, studied him and and, uh, and dissected him and, and put the game plan for him and, uh, you know, did what we were supposed to do. That was it. You know, catching me, punching between. You know, they didn't, they said we didn't have a jab. You know, we had a great jab. They say we don't throw a lot of punches. I mean, you know, we just, man. Yeah, yeah man. Well, that's basically it, Tom. We just, uh, yeah, like I, was I say, just... studied him up. And, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, there really wasn't much to study, you know? Like I said, he's a freight train type of guy. He's a, He's a come get you type of guy behind your jab type of guy, and uh, you know what? It wasn't it wasn't really that much to study. You know how he coming behind the double jab. You know he throwing wide punches, looping punches, and uh, you know I mean like the guy is a hell of a fighter. We just took him apart. You know Crawford is the best, and he he's been showing throughout his career that he's a surgeon, and uh, you know he just upped it up a little bit. You know. For the event. I was just surprised, Bernie. I mean, y'all just out everything, Errol Spence. You out thought him. I mean, you know, you beat him to everything. You had a better jab. You had a better body attacking. Bud didn't even throw. Y'all didn't even throw that many combination punches. I mean, I was just surprised like how like how you just blew through him. It was just like it was like watching like an amateur. It was like watching Mr. Miyagi teaching Danielson like how to actually, you know, instead of Martial arts, it was like actually how to box. I was just, I was just like amazed. I was like, man, they making this look. I was like, this is a damn match match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Bud started off like, you know, with a sludge hammer jab and, uh, you know, good rhythm and everything. He was warmed up pretty good and, you know, he just came out the gates, you know. I mean, like he said, you know, you was going to witness it this for sure. You know, he told you. You gonna witness it, and uh, it was something to get motivated for, or something to, uh, we had a, a point to prove, and uh, you know, it was added motivation, and uh, we showed out like it's supposed to us. I mean, you know, I, like I say, everything he said uh, happened to him. Every if you look at everything Earl Spence said, it happened to him. So, I mean, you know, everybody was just down on Bud, saying this, saying that, just going with the go along, and <clears throat> I mean, again, they, they, everybody underestimated the kid. How satisfying is this victory? Do y'all feel like this is y'all's sweetest victory or it's just like, you know, business as usual and like, you know, on to the next? Well, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like it's a great victory, but, um, you know, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a it's, the victory is sweet because, again, we was kicked about. We was, you know, put down. We was all these narratives was getting made with us, and that's really what it's about, you know. We, we, that was it. It was a proving the point, you know. And uh, Earl Spence was just a casualty of war. He was just, you know. And when he bought into the rhetoric, that 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 spelled doom for him, you know. And uh, you seen Derrick James, like I say, he he the same way, you know. He fell into the rhetoric, or you know, he was too arrogant and too too much and. Like I say, they didn't, they didn't, you know, it, they, it led them blind. Like I say, this is a biblical story taking place, really, if, when you think about it all from start to finish. Yeah, Bernie, one of the things that I appreciated, I was glad to see, like, you know, on the big stage that you got your flowers, you got your props from Bo Mac, and shout out to Bo Mac. And he mentioned you because you are a, a, a pivotal part of this because I know what you do behind the scenes and stuff. And I just think you don't get enough credit because you are a motivator and, you know, and you are a teacher. And I hope 
Bernie, you get your name out there so people can see how much knowledge you got of boxing. And well, I'm just like really happy to say it's good to, you know, have you as a friend. And I'm glad that you like, you know, y'all let me in y'all little circle. You coach and uh, Bo Mac really appreciate that, man. You know, so I just wanted to give you your props for that. So like what what's next for y'all, man? Uh, well, like I say, I appreciate I appreciate uh, the compliments and everything. And uh, I mean, you know, like I say, uh, far as credit, you know, it ain't nothing that I'll never look for is you no know, credit. Uh, you know, it's just uh, boxing is something that I love. And Bud is a, a fellow that I love and uh, been with him ever since and uh, always had a special feeling about him. And, uh, you know, so it's just like, I don't know, like you said, it, it, I feel like, you know, you got, I got 30 some years in the business. I'm real, a real, uh, uh, guru of the boxing. I'm, you know, I'm a student of the game. Let me say that. I really love boxing. So, you know what I mean? If, uh, you know, uh, if, if, if I get credit for that, for being a student of the game, I appreciate it. Yeah, man, because I love when you be spitting that knowledge, man, because I watch your show frequently whenever I can. And it's cool because, you know, I'm just a media dude. I don't pretend to know everything about boxing. So I whatever. Yeah. yeah, I get some of my knowledge from you and other people that's actually in the business and stuff. And that helps me and it helps me better the channel. I just sit up there and just let you cook and stuff. But yeah, Bernie, is there anybody like in particular that you know, that you want to address, because like I said, this has been a long five years, man. I just seen the ridicule and how you guys were treated by just certain people, how a lot of times, you know, you got exiled and stuff and, you know, like, is there anything that you want to address? And you don't have to say no names unless you want to, because I feel like this y'all moment, man, because it was just like, finally, it was over with. And when, you know, Bud got those bells put around him, I felt like, okay, it's vindication because I seen what was said about you guys and how you were treated. And I just felt the fact that people just went way beyond just celebrating this fight, which should have been a celebration of two black fighters having one of the biggest, uh, you know, matches in history. And it just turned into an ugly sideshow circus. So, you know, I just wanted to get your opinion on that. Uh, well, I, I, I don't think it turned into a sideshow circus at all. And uh, I think that, you know, every time something, you know, you're going to get memes and everything, you're going to get people to make fun of you no matter what, you know, that's always something. So we didn't knew, you knew how it was going to go. Um, uh, and uh, you know how the Internet is. So I wouldn't say that to turn into no circus. I think that um, and, and, and it wasn't about race, neither. It was about the best fighting the best. So, uh, you know, uh, that was Absolutely. it. You know, you just had the best fighting the best. You couldn't go around nowhere else. And again, sports transcends race and, uh, and uh, class and everything else, you know, rich, poor, you know, sports transcends that. So, so when you, when you on a uh, plant, when you're on the field, wherever uh, arena you in, everything is uh, the level, you know, far as uh, you versus you, I mean, for you versus, you know, the man, you know, never know. I'm not talking about anybody behind pulling strings or telling you to do this or, but you know, in sport it's all, it's fair. And um, so I think that's what this was about. And as uh, far as, uh, you know, it's no need to gloat, you know, uh, there's no need to gloat. Those guys who was really going for Earl Spence, again, they wasn't really looking into the situation at all. They was feeding the narrative and the rhetoric that was put out. And uh, they was just going along with the go along, you know. Um, so for those guys, you know, like I say, they know who they are, and and again, they they probably didn't quit. Now they didn't they didn't abandon him. Now they threw him away. Now and uh and and retaking everything that they said back about him, you know, um laughing at him, probably making all kind of jokes about him too. So, um, like I say, so uh, we don't no need to gloat. You know, I talked to Bud last night, like he said, you know, people telling him, well, they would have did this, and if this would have if this was you, it would have happened to you like this. They would have said this. They would have did this to you all. They would have said, but Bud said, that's why we're unique. That's why we're different, you know, because we don't do that. So if you see how Bud showed him so much class through the fight, through the up to the build up, up to after, after the fight, you know, um, it's really an emotional thing to watch, especially for being on the inside. And again, you know, uh, feeling like, uh, like I say, Earl Spence was a casualty of war, being that, again, uh, uh, at the bolster of every article, 
um, of what he's done, how much better he is than everybody, and all these different things that that uh, they're saying about Earl Spence, and then the slights that they're putting him about Bud. Um, you know, uh, he 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 fell into those things, and like I say, so that that right there just it just it just you know it just nailed it, sealed it for him. I think everybody else, uh, like I say, going along with the go along, not doing no history, not doing no research or nothing, just going along with the go along. Him feeling like believing all those hype, listening to those articles, uh, listening to what everybody say, everybody putting a camera to his face, telling them this, telling them that. It was just like, okay, he believed that. He never, uh, never, I don't think he never took Bud serious in a way to truly prepare and understand what was coming for him. You know, and uh, Derrick James as well. And also, I like to point out too, you know, um, he didn't have no spiritual base. You know, I don't know really what they go, but he had no spiritual base. You know, um, like I say, you know, he he thanked his mom and dad and never thanked the Lord one time. You know, out at, of at all his ways going up, even at the press conference or when they announced the fight, never thanked God. You know, not that I heard him. And, uh, you know, Bud thanked the Lord every step. So I think that played a big part in everything too. Again, you know, this guy was a, this guy was a like a, um, uh, uh, I don't want to say, like I'm saying, a patsy, uh, a pawn. He was a, a the fall guy for everything that's going on that's wrong with, with uh, the world. You know, uh, no individuality, um, uh, 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 the 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 politics of things, the blackballing of, you know, just 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 a whole lot of nonsense. You know. Um, and uh, he 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 fed that, you know. Like I say, you know, they 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 purposely made him fight Mikey Garcia and put that situation there to to bolster his numbers. You know, he used that as to say, "Well, Bud, you ain't selling nothing." You know, he he made his own he made his own bed, man. He had to lay, he had to lay in it, man. He had, he made his own bed. And far as that, but you know, again, we don't want to brag about that or you know throw nothing else in his face. The whooping took for itself, you know, the the uh, the the beating that he took the. Uh, punch man they took was uh like I say everything turned around on him you know everything that he said and predicted going all the way up turned on him so it was uh it was like I say a spiritual moment but the thing that bothered me most about everything was um was uh Derrick James I didn't see his compassion for his fighter for his for his for uh, a guy that was like his son I didn't see that you know um I feel like he shouldn't have went to the press conference. He shouldn't have went to there. He shouldn't have, he should have talked at a later time. He did his interview in the ring. And after that, he should have went to the doctor and went and been with his loved ones, not sit up on no stage and, and come to the pre-fight press con after the pre the post-fight press conference. So, uh, and then at the same time, James, he never hugged him. I never seen him put his arm around him. He sat so far away from him. He didn't have, you know, at this time of moment, you know, you need somebody with you you know, especially up on the stage, you know, like that. So I feel like he, you know, he just didn't. And his answers, if you watch the press conference at the end, you know, he was talking, he just, why did he say, I'm going to London on Tuesday? I don't know. I think it was maybe he got to process it or yeah, I don't know. He can't process it this fast because he got so much other stuff going on. I don't know, but, uh, but, uh, you know, so that was what bothered me, but the thing that uh, warmed my heart was uh, how Bud, how, how Bud was. I said this though. I've said this. You, you, you tried to goat me into that. You said if Bud win, would he throw in his face? And we said no. And I told you that he wouldn't. I told you that. Um, like I say, but uh, Bud was when he when he dropped uh, Charlo, when he dropped uh, Spence, maybe the second time I think, and he went over there and he was talking to Charlo. He did take his mind off of Spence for a second because he dropped him. But when he went back to start the action and the bell rang, he reached around the referee to tap hands with him. So Bud was sweet to this guy the whole time. At the whole after every round, Bud was tapping gloves with him, you know, uh, you know, almost giving him a way to go type of thing, you know. Um, it, it was something that had to happen. He had to uh, punish him. He had to uh, outclass him and, and beat him in fashion. But it was like it wasn't with with uh, with passion. It wasn't like with happiness, you know. Once once he started beating him and started, uh, it, it wasn't with happiness, you know. It was just going about his job, 
So, uh, like I say, but he showed them a lot of compassion after the fight. The hugs was genuine from both of those guys. You could see they genuinely had mutual respect for each other. And and, and uh, it, it brought tears to my eyes. Yeah, that's that's cool. And I'm glad you brought up Derek James. I thought it was uncharacteristic when, you know, I kind of was a little bothered by some of the press conference. I mean, him like attacking Bo Mack and stuff. And, you know, you had to hear this stuff about you guys hadn't fought anybody. And, you know, I had to come with some statistics. I did my own research and I basically did some statistics on how you guys fared since you moved up to uh, welterweight. And basically, um, you guys defense, Bud, nobody landed over 100 punches on Bud except for the mean machine. So and it was kind of funny. Errol Spence had one of the uh, lowest connect rates versus Bud. And and I was thinking to myself, they were saying, well, this dude didn't fight anybody. And then looking at the way that you guys went through Errol Spence. So what does that say about him? But I want to ask you about Derek James. Me, myself, Bernie, I thought Spence was finished after that third knockdown. I thought he was busted up badly. It was no way he was going to get back into the fight. And basically, I thought that Derek James should have threw in the towel or Errol Spence's father should have told him to stop the fight. And it looked like Bud kind of was looking like, OK, I don't want to really like hurt this dude. So do you think that Derek James didn't throw in the towel because his ego got in the way because had I think Harvey Doc, if he not have stepped in, Errol Spence would have got really seriously hurt, possibly carried out on the stretcher. So do you think Derek James should have stopped the fight? Because safety is always the most important thing, Bernie, and I want you guys to be safe. But I thought Errol was done after the third no knockdown. There was no way he was going to land some miracle punch to put Bud's lights out. Bud is too sharp and too swift for that. So what do you think? Yeah, I think that, you know, they prolonged the fight because of, uh, you know, his pride and everything. But uh, like I said, he 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 never gave uh, Bud no no credit. He never. And I really think that it wasn't just like, I really think it was true. I don't think it was like a, like, um, you know, like a false, you know, situation. You know, I think it was really true. He had disdain for Bud. He had disdain for Bomac. So he really, I don't know how prepared they really were for the fight, you know, as far as that, like, they they wasn't they really believed all they all their critics. They really believed them, all their all their praisers. And uh so I think that that did have enough had a lot to do with it. Um the pride and the way he was just the fashion that he was getting beat up in. Um I think that did that did have a, a effect on it. But uh like I say, uh, you know, he just didn't show no compassion with that kid. I don't know uh where he was at after the fight. I can't wait to watch it on television. But I don't know where he was at when uh, he was doing the uh, interview in the ring. But I know I seen his father there. And the whole time, I really was feeling for his father the whole time. And, uh, you know, I said a couple of things about him and uh, not about his father, but about Spence. And, you know, a lot of people know what I said and hear me. And uh, like I say, I, I hate to uh, have that on him like that. But uh, I sure enough felt sorry for him. And I, and I touched him on his shoulder when he was walking out the ring, you know, and uh, put my hand on his shoulder and we looked at each other and he understood that, you know, he had my, he had my deepest empathy. Yeah. So that's that's why I feel for the father. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good to hear that. So let me ask you this, cause Bernie, I wanted to get some clarification on, you know, how boxing works. So is you've been hearing about a, a, a rematch possibly taking place in December. So Bernie, is it true when you suffer a defeat via KO, you automatically suspended for at least six months and it's July and I'm here in December. Would it even be possible to do a rematch in December? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, uh, I'm not necessarily uh, familiar with the rule. I couldn't think about it. I know some, you do have to sit out after a while, but he wasn't knocked out cold. You know what I mean? So he was, it was a stoppage. So I don't know how what's the difference is between knockout cold and stoppage. Uh, you know, he did. But, you know, this is boxing. You know, I think he can definitely come back. Everybody's saying he did take a beating, but it was such a high profile fight that, you know, nobody expected to be a one sided ass with him. I, I, I myself, when I had to think about it, they said um, myself, I really thought back to uh, 
the last time something like that happened was against um, Salvador Sanchez and uh, Wilfredo Gomez. Wilfredo Gomez was knocking everybody out at 122 pounds and had been the reigning champion for so long. And uh, Sanchez was the reigning featherweight champion, and he moved up, so it was a super fight in that fight. And uh, he just dominated uh, uh, Gomez. So I think, you know, I think that's the last time we see that, even though, and, uh, you know, even though uh, Bud was just kind of the smaller guy moving up, um, they both was high, high level at, on, the, on the throne at the time. I think uh, Sanchez, the only one that had a loss, and that was early in his career and uh, had been on a wave for so long. And uh, Gomez was undefeated, so you know it was a uh, it was a blowout by Salvador Sanchez, and uh, you know so that that's about what I can say about as far as that victory. Uh, he looks sharp, he looks spectacular, and as far as a rematch, you know, like I say, I wouldn't know if he can get the rematch or not, or should he take it. Um, I think he would take it, and I think when well, I just actually happened to run into a reel where Buzz said. You know, 54, they probably could rematch. And I think the money is in there at 54. I think he owes it to himself to fight Bud again at 54. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I think I think that's where we just need to leave that. Can he do better? Probably. Maybe. You know, maybe he do a little bit better. Maybe. You know, will he win? Probably not. But I think that as a fighter, you know, almost like Shane Mosley. Shane Mosley took a beating against Vernon Forrest, and that was a 12-round beating. He didn't get stopped. But uh, he took a lot of punishment in that fight, and he came back and he fought a hell of a lot better against uh, Vernon Forrest. So, like I say, even though he took a bad beat, and I don't, it wasn't a, you know, it was a, it was a beat down, but it's it's not one that he he can't come back from. Well, you know, speaking of that, you know, I looked at various, you know, um, various websites, and you know, I was listening to trainers, I was listening to boxers. A lot of people were saying, you know, really. It's kind of like more people are saying there's no reason for a rematch because the fight is, was so one-sided. You know, Timothy Bradley basically said it didn't make a difference whether it's at one 147 or 154 uh, yeah. that Bud would be victorious. And, you know, uh, Virgil Hunter said that Spence should consider retire retirement. Me, myself, I would recommend, this is just me, my own personal opinion, is being a dude that's being a beat reporter. Uh, me myself, I think Errol Spence shouldn't even go directly to you guys into another fight. I think Errol Spence should sit for a minute and take a, a tune up fight. I mean, Bud basically came out of there unscathed. I mean, Errol Spence only landed, according to Comfy Box, like 96 punches against Bud. That's not a lot of that's not a lot of punches. And then um, Bud looked like he hadn't even been in the fight. So I can understand Bud wanting to take another fight in between. But looking at the punishment that Errol Spence took, I think he shouldn't even remotely think about a rematch. I think he should should rest. So what's going on with uh, Charlo? Because now a lot of interest has, you know, been drawn into that fight. So now a lot of people are like, you know, Bud is on top of the world now. He's he's the undisputed champion and he's the undisputed pound for pound fighter. It's kind of like you guys, you know, you guys are on the throne. You guys sitting tall on the throne. So I would like to know is Bud can what is you guys considering? Are you considering Charlo or are you gonna wait for Arrow or you know you should you should see it? A lot of people say you guys have earned the right to just not even have to fight anymore this year. So I kind of want to know or what's in the plans. Would you be interested well, in running well, it right back? Uh, I can't say I don't make the uh plans, I don't make uh the decisions. I think that uh you know have to talk that over with Bo, but me, myself, I think that Earl Spence, I think he's going to be all right. I think that, um, again, the weight will probably will help him. And uh, I think that, uh, like I say, um, the weight to help and he don't have a lot of uh, – it's not a lot of pressure on his shoulders no more. So I think that's that's going to be a help of motivation for him is uh, it's not a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Uh, I think he had – I think he's the type of guy that, can understand when he went wrong and he messed up and he atoned for it. Uh, he know, like I say, he was talking shit about everybody before and he get, you know, now he's in the, in that position. And uh, so I think that, you know, it's a lot of learning lessons here, but I think that the fight will be a good fight at 54. I think that, you know, the money is in there. They already set it up for uh, the rematch. And uh, I think, you know, again, why Mel's doing what he's doing. Yeah. I think we should go out there and then give him another, see how, 
you know, if, if this guy, now this guy was a unified champion. This guy was an undefeated fighter. This guy was a tank of a type of guy, fighter, you know. So, again, um, I think maybe the weight probably could have messed him up. You know, he's a kind of a bigger guy than Bud. Um, you know, Bud said he had trouble making the weight, and Bud is just a solid type of guy, a, a, you know, a shorter guy, but a solid fighter, a, a lot, lot of muscle. And, uh, you know, these are some kind of, you know, these guys are getting their 30s, and, uh, you know, they're not kids anymore. And, you know, 147 pounds, that's, you know, they got junior high guys that weight. So um, I think that he might be a little bit better. And, uh, you know, I mean, he got he got a chance to look at Bud, too, which was, you know, this guy was zinging me with everything. But, you know, uh, I'm sure that with his boxing experience, uh, he can probably find some type of way to try to, you know, nullify those things, at least in his mind, you know. So I think it's a good fight at 54. I think that, you know, with all that he's accomplished and everything that uh, that he's earned, I still think they owe the fight. You know, we had to so sort of say, like, so the fight wasn't a fluke. You know, they say Earl Spence came in with, you know, they're making up a couple, couple things. You know, he didn't look right coming in. You know, all these other type of things. But at the same time, with all that being said, even though it truly really ain't a, re, a need for a rematch, the, because of the things I just said and because the rematch is in place and because it's money on the table, let's go. Yeah, Bernie, uh, I can give you the numbers. I don't know if you know um, right now they haven't put out the final numbers, but from what I heard, you guys did uh, 800,000 just in the States. They haven't did the European numbers. So you did, in all likelihood, sell over a million pay-per-views, which means this was a prof profitable, uh, profitable fight. Then you did like 21 million at the gate so you only did 1 million less than tank and ryan garcia so i do believe that the money is there i just was wondering would the outcome be a little bit different and that's funny that you mentioned that bud um may be having a little bit of trouble uh at 147 so you so bud is possibly done with 147 it's really nothing for bud to do at 147 i know Everybody is talking about this fight with Boots Ennis. I know that some of the people are gonna find a new uh, a new dude to rally behind. I guess some of the you know some of these dudes that can't stand Team Crawford. I know that's gonna be the new guy that they gonna push towards you guys. So, um, do you have any desire um, if you decide to stay at 147? Is there any desire or any need to fight somebody like Boots? Because I still think Boots is a little is a little green. That me myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that, uh, you know, uh, with this, you know, Bud did say that. He mentioned it. It's, it's on film. You know, he said, uh, you know, 54, him fighting Spence in the rematch at 154 won't be out of the out of range because, again, he had just a, a slight difficulty make, making the 54-pound division, and he already talked about moving up uh, fighting Charlo. But uh, I think that uh, the fights next, if it was going to be a fight, it would be a Keith Thurman fight. I think uh, Keith Thurman has a name. I think Keith Thurman is the accomplished guy in the division. I think he's going to be able to sell a fight. And though he might not be able to um, to win the fight and is going to be an underdog in the fight, I think that, you know, uh, his, 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 his movement, his, uh, you know, his punching power and everything too, uh, mostly his movement though will uh, be uh, of, of uh, a benefit for him and maybe uh, stand him a chance to maybe last the distance or, you know, go to the later rounds. But I think Keith Thurman is a, is a, is, will be a good fight, um, being that he was a unified champion and, uh, you know, high-profile type of fighter and an accomplished fighter. You know, he only lost that one time, you know. So, uh, and that was a close fight to Pacquiao. So you got a lot of people that just, again, follow the media, and you got people that don't know shit about boxing and is talking shit about Keith Thurman and just mad at him when he already did, did everything pretty much there was to do, was the man at the division, and he fought the big money fight with Manny Pacquiao. So he had been fighting all his life. He decided to go and relax and enjoy this shit because he know what kind of bullshit goes on with this shit. So you got those people that dog keep Thurman out and uh, try to put him at his nowhere, but I feel like exactly as he going to come together if he get a bullet fight. He going to look better than he did against Barrios. He going to look better than he did against the other fella that he fought, you know, so um, I think that would be a good fight for him. Yeah, I, I think I would like to see Keith Thurman. I think that would be 
style wise, I think that would be an interesting matchup. I mean, Bud would be the favorite, but I would tune into a fight like that. And and speaking of possible opponents now, for some reason, I had to get your opinion on this, Bernie. For some reason, Tank then came out of nowhere and said he believes he can come up to 147 and he says he'll stop Terrence Crawford. Do you think that's just clout chasing or do you think Tank is serious about a fight with Bud? I know dollar wise, I mean, that would probably be shit. I don't want to be pocket watching. I know that's 30 million for Bud if he was to entertain the thought of that fight. But would you think you guys would be interested in a in, in a fight with Tank if he's serious? I mean, now that you guys are are affiliated with Al, I think it's a fight that could be made. Would you be interested in a in a fight with Tank Davis or Bud possibly? You know what the truth is, of course. So you know what you know. You know what you know. All this gonna take is to Tank to put his uh his uh money his money where his mouth is. You understand? That's all that's going to take. He going to move to 147 and fight Bud? Shit. Come on, man. He going to get killed. You know that. Man, <laughs> Bud going to do so much shit to that man. He talking about he ain't going to hit Bud. He think he ain't going to hit Bud. He talking about, now look, like I say, you know what What you think? You see that jab Bud was hitting that man with? I, I, hey, was, Bernie, you know, I, I, I was there, man. <laughs> I mean, I was there in spirit, man. I saw it. I was at David Buster's. So I, I hit y'all right after the fight. This man went tooth and nail with Gamboa, bro. An uh, old Gamboa, bro. He went tooth and nail with Gamboa, bro. Come on. You ain't punching like that. And Gamboa was chinny. Come on, bro. You you wasn't crappy enough to get Gamboa out of there? Stop it. You know what I'm saying? But, again, uh, that's just go to show you that tank. You know, I thought he had kind of got over it. But he's still a sad, pathetic, you know, jealous little, you know, motherfucking. Again, look like Gary Russell doing all that talking. Let's put your money where your mouth is. Make it happen. Do something about it then. That's all they got to say. Ain't nobody, he ain't he need this talk. Yeah, B Bernie, you think um, you think Danny Garcia would ever come out of hiding and just finally get in the ring with Bud? You know, do you think he would be a possibility at one? I mean, if he is the, if the Laura fight falls through, do you think if he said, you know what, I'm ready to fight Terrence Crawford? Um, Let's, you know, Al, let's make it happen with, with Danny Garcia or even Laura, even though I pray to God, Bud, don't fight Laura because I think that would be a horrible fight based off Laura's uh, fighting style. I mean, Bud would, would ice him, but, you know, as far as, like, viewing-wise, I don't think it would be a good fight. I just think Laura would stink up the joint. So either one of those two would interest uh, you guys, possibly? Uh, Like I say, I'd rather go with Keith Thurman. I think Keith Thurman got one loss and he was a unified champion division and he beat all those other guys. So Bud beat the main guy and uh Spence beat the, I mean and Keith Thurman beat the rest of the guy. So I think that is a logical fight, you know. Um I think uh Enos, like I say, uh he has a lot of fights, so to speak, but he hasn't fought the right fights to get the shot at the title. So I think, you know, he needs to fight, you know, like the standing on his biz or the Virgil Ortiz and you know, now if those fights eventually don't materialize, you're gonna have to give him somebody gonna have to give him a shot. But I think that, you know, uh his time is just he need to take his time a little bit. He, he ain't really he ain't really doing it yet. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to get your thoughts on all that. You know, and um I was just like, you know, like I said, I was just surfing and just seeing what was go seeing what was out there. You know, um, a lot of people are still in disbelief. You know, I didn't heard everybody say just ridiculous things about, you know, Bud. They just are in shock based off what Bud did and how easy he made it look. I mean, Bernie, yeah. do you want to uh, address any of the, the bullshit that people were saying about, you know, Bud, like weight drained him and Bud was fucked with his gloves, all that, um, all that goofy shit. Or, you know, just Derek James put something in Errol Spence. I didn't heard it all. I heard Errol Spence had a crack rib going into the fight. I just wanted to give you a chance to address all that stuff. Basically, I just wanted you to address all the people that's putting out these bullshit rumors about you guys. Well, I did hear that he had a that he got had a rib injury. I did okay. hear that. But as far as the gloves, I was right there when they selected gloves. I was right there with Errol Spence. I was right there with his dad. I was right there with Derrick James. I was right there with Bo, so we was all right there. After they weighed in, they went and selected the gloves. I seen them put the gloves up. 
I seen him test the gloves out. Bud wasn't even there, though, matter of fact. Bud wasn't even there. So uh, it was Earl Spence was right there uh, picking out his gloves. Bud was right. I mean, uh, Bo was right there. So was right there. And uh, he picked out his gloves and uh, they, 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 they package them up. They, they put them in a, they put them in a, like a, you know, like they put them, they hot, they hot, they save them. They, they lock them up, you know? So you can't even see the gloves. So uh, you can't even touch them. Nobody else can get to them. And uh, that was, that was it. That's. Oh, I mean, yeah. That, thank you. Yeah, thank you, because I wanted to address that. I wanted to shut that shit down right away because, you know, I know people like to just take something to run with it and stuff. I'm seeing people making these fake videos like, look at this, look at this. So, you know, I'd rather get it straight from the people that's, you know, that's in the boxing game and let you explain to some of these dummies and some of these casuals like how this shit works. So They even you know. lied and said uh, somebody had lied and put a video out there, but had missed weight. And that was a oh, lie. Oh, thank you, Bernie. Go ahead, because I wanted to hear that too. Because yeah, no, uh, Bud weighed one forty six point eight, like it is, right on the rip. Earl Spence weighed one forty seven. I was sitting right there. I was standing right there. So, so Bernie, could you tell people? Because I saw people putting some video attaching Bud to some scale that said one fifty and saying Bud didn't make weight. You know, I know that was Photoshop. So, Bernie, um. I want you to let people know, Bernie, when you guys are getting weighed, is any cameras or filming of any sort allowed while you guys are trying to be weighed, you know, before the ceremonial weigh in? Is any type of cameras allowed in the weight room? The commission do. Every, the commission tape you. The commission is watching. The commission video tapes you. So it's highly unlikely the commission would put out a video <laughs> seeing uh breaking news Terrence Crawford misses weight. Mm -mm, that would have that would have no somebody else made that up. I'm telling you, I was all right, you guys. So, so so there you have it. So there you have it. You heard it straight from Bernie the boxer. Hey, hey, Bernie, do you, can you see any of the comments in the comment section? You know, can you see any yeah, of the they comments? Come, they coming up. They they come up. Any, Some any, of them come up. Bernie, do you want to answer any questions? Any of you guys want to ask Bernie some questions or something? Anybody want to relay some questions to Bernie? Because we got him here. If you want to ask some questions, you should ask it. Ask him now because Bernie is a busy man. And keep in mind, it's uh, it's like after ten o'clock out there. <laughs> so you know. It's cool. Hold on, I'll get to some. Hold on, let me watch. Let me get my stuff together. Okay. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I, I, I keep boxing shit all day today. Let me see. Yep. Two-time video. Oh, God, D-Ray asked me a good question before. He asked me a good question. I can't remember what he said, though. He says, you know how Bud was saying, was saying to Charlo, oh, he just told him he was next. He told Charlo he was next. That's all he did. Mm -hmm. Told him he was next. Appreciate everybody in the chat. Appreciate all the congratulations, everything, man. Appreciate everybody, man. Dogged out. We was put down. We was blackballed. I mean, and, man, we came through with uh, super flying colors. Is there an uh, Bernie? Can you elaborate on the black ball thing if you can? If you if you're not you know if you can't talk about it, then that's fine. But I kind of wanted to get uh, some more transparency on black ball thing. If you can talk about it, if you can't, fine. If you can, you know, because I kind of want want people to get a grasp of what's going on. Because you know, I didn't been around you guys, so I kind of yeah. understand what you were saying. But if you can elaborate. Would you be, uh, you know, able to elaborate on what you mean by the blackballing thing? I mean, well, y'all know. I mean, the uh, blackball. You know, the newspapers was putting out all this bad stuff about Bud. He ain't fought nobody. He don't sell no tickets. Everything you could think about, you know, that every all those things, the, uh, all those things. That's blackball. You no, know, couldn't get no fights with nobody. They, uh, he on the wrong side of the street. Uh, you know, all those type of things. Those are blackball tactics to keep Bud out. You know, then when he beat somebody, uh, they 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 shit on that. 
They say he ain't fought nobody. They say this guy was doing this. It was something was wrong with him, you know. And they still stu- doing it right now, you know. When Spence looked it so good against Danny Garcia, he looked it so good against uh 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 the other fella Ugas. They was all singing his praises. Uh, everybody was uh saying how he good he looked. You didn't they didn't bring up no car accident. They didn't bring up no car accident. But soon as he soon as this now, they bring up the car accident. You know, it's it's uh it's uh they they make up something. He didn't look right when he came in. Uh, he didn't look when they ever look right. He ain't look right, he ain't never look right. You know, and and uh uh the one thing he did, you know, when he came back from the accident, he had he had his uh he was talking funny because his new teeth. But like I say, they talking about he's talking slower and isn't it? He been slow. He been a relaxed type of guy, a laid back type of guy, you know. So, I mean, you know, you 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 get them to say anything. They okay. say anything. They don't ever get nobody no credit. Yeah, Bernie. One guy wants to know. He says, "Hey, Bernie, are you instrumental in helping Bud decide his choice of opponents?" No, no. But but I'm telling you like this. Bud takes some lottie dotty. Y'all know who Lottie Dotty is? That means any fucking body. That's how Bud takes them. Now, when you with a when you with somebody like a top rank that 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 picks your fights, you know they 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 pick your fights. But Bud Bud Bud, Bud don't have no no problem with nothing. He fight anybody. Hey Bernie, um, b- back in the day, somebody wanted me to ask you about this. D- did you feel at one time? Because now that you elaborated on the on the blackballing thing, um, I know I remember when Bud went to Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury one in Los Angeles, and I remember Bud was there in the tennis, and for a while, the PBC didn't even acknowledge Bud's WBO uh belt. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Did. Yeah, and I saw them disrespect Bud. They showed everybody on the jumbotron, except yeah. except Bud. And now yeah. it's like they need Bud. So did Bud feel a little bit disrespected by that when well, they were? I, of course, that's all part of the blackballing. That's all part of the blackballing. Like I say, they had uh, Mike Garcia on the on the uh, as top welterweight, and Mike Garcia never did nothing at welterweight. You know. He was a good fighter and he won in the lighter ways, but he was not even the top world to weight. And they, like I say, not even the champion. Bud was a reigning champion and, and still they wouldn't even acknowledge him as a top world to weight. So, you know, even if even if he's not with you guys, you still got to you still got to acknowledge him. He's a champion, you know. But again, the, the black ball and everything else, like I say, that's why they came crashing down. That's it. That's why they came crashing down. And now it's kind of funny. They talked about the other the street and it's kind of like now they need bud i mean it's funny how the stars a lot now now bud is like I, I ain't gonna say it's now it's now like they need bud it's just you know it, it, you had to do what the people want the people weren't gonna stand for it earl spence couldn't do another fight without fighting bud his train was finna sail his boat was finna float either he was gonna get fed to canelo or he had to fight bud <laughs> No, that was it. That was not, Exposed. It was only two it y'all was see, only two y- y'all hear, y'all heard this straight from Bernie the Boxers. I, I, I told y'all this. I told y'all this. I brought up Cadello a couple of years ago when they was talking about that fake ass package. So appreciate it, Bernie man. Appreciate it, man. So now you are making me look like I'm smarter than what I really am. But you know, I tried to explain this to people because I'm really out here doing the work and you know not sitting up behind a computer making up stuff and this is why i brought you on here you know because i want people to think to believe that i'm authentic and i'm really talking to you guys because i don't know everything I'm not sitting up here talking behind a computer line and shit i'm actually this is why i bought bernie on here you getting a guy that's in the business he knows what the fuck he's talking about and i'm not sitting up here clickbaiting and lying and making up shit so you yeah. know so but yeah, yeah, Bernie. Um, I'm I'm glad you elaborated on it. So now you guys hear it. They was they was ready to sacrifice Errol Spence to Canelo. I mean that that was his only two options. It was only options. I mean, Canelo. You know he couldn't. You know that's 
wasn't nobody going to stand for him fighting nobody else. Either he was going to was gonna get Canelo because that's a big fight, or he had to fight Bud. Keith Thurman was going to be his last out. Keith Thurman was going to be his last out. That was going to be his last out. That was going to be the only thing that could say was uh, Keith Thurman or something like that. Is going, you know, because Keith Thurman, what he accomplished and everything I said before. But outside of that, he wasn't going to be able to fight nobody. He had to have to fight Bud. Like you said, everywhere he went, they was bothering him about it. So, Oh, yeah, because I was hearing people in his own hometown was like, bothering him about it i thought one of the biggest things that i thought was was complete cap was the whole thing and i want to make it seem like uh, i'm pocket watching but when i was hearing these uh degrading offers about you know bud need to take uh 80 20 70 30 or take what we yeah. you know we give them yeah. i just thought to yeah. a certain degree i thought that was like a stall tactic and I thought to a certain degree they wasn't really trying to make the fight. And, you know, I thought to a certain degree they was trying to age Bud out. So that's why I understood why, you know, Bud took that fight with David uh, Abanesian, which I was supposed to be at that fight. But, you know, I, I you know, you know, I was with y'all in New York because, remember, it was two fights on the same night. So, you know, but, yeah, Um yeah, I wanted to just have you touch on that a little bit. Was all these, and then you heard a lot of stuff about that. You know, Spence had signed the contract. I wanted you to kind of talk about the fake, these so-called fake, uh, you know, contracts that was supposed to be sent to you guys. Just, if, just elaborate or just talk about it as much as you know about, you know. Uh, I mean, I don't, again, you know, like I say, that they didn't know it right in November. That's why they didn't fight. They were playing around. Them guys were playing around in uh in November, December. So that that's that's just what happened. They they was playing around, and when they did that, Bud went on and, and showed them he didn't need them, and uh, you know what I'm saying? Got got the money, uh, got in shape, stayed in shape. You know, had a little like I say you call it a tune up fight, had some action, and uh, you know, she went on about our business. We we back where we we back where we need to be. No, that's how I work. Yeah, Bernie Bud seems to be like a student of the game. I like the fact that Bud takes care of himself. You don't hear about you know Bud being involved in any you know incidents outside of uh, uh, boxing. Is that true? Like Bud doesn't drink. He doesn't do none of that stuff. He basically really just trains and stays in shape. Yeah, yeah, that's all we do. I don't say you know we uh occupy the time with the basketball and darts and pool and everything else and you know he, he never been much of a party you know never been like one you know all the fighters uh, uh all the fighters party you know uh you know they it's just a way of life you know for a lot of uh you know it's just a way of life you know even though it's it's, it look, it's frowned upon it's just a way of life you know and uh bud never he never took into that he never was uh that type of guy, you know, never a drinker or, you know, stuff like that. But I don't necessarily knock the guys when they do it. You know, there's plenty of great fighters that did it, that live like that. And, uh, you know, it, it, it don't affect them. Like Daniel Zaragoza, the, uh, the great Mexican uh, Vanderway and Junior Featherweight champion, he used to smoke a pack of cigarettes every day. Then about, he said about five weeks or six weeks before the fight, he stopped smoking cigarettes. So, you know, it's uh, boxing got to come in contact with like two, bro. No, Bird is one of those guys that, you know, he finds himself find time to do something else. Okay, yeah. So, Bernie, um, I, a couple of last questions because I know you've been here for almost out. Hey, so, uh, Bernie, when you guys train in Colorado, is it a specific purpose why you train in Colorado? Because I know the air is like real thin up there because I didn't been to Denver a couple of times. Just seemed like if you walk up the street, if it seemed like you walked a mile, and you know I went there for a Raiders game when they played the uh, Broncos, and yeah, Denver is kind of like is that one of the reasons why Bud trains up there so he can you know be long winded and helps him with his breathing, you know, going through these twelve round fights. Well, something that we started doing years back, and uh, you know, just something to stay, and of course, you know that's where the Olympic athletes train at. And uh, for the altitude training and everything, you know, uh, help you better. So, yeah, definitely he did that to uh, 
you know, try to get an edge. And that's where he's been training for the last 10 years. And, um, you know, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's, a, and again, a, a getaway. You know, we got our own facilities at home, but just to get away so you can focus, like you said, on the task at hand, you know. Hey, Ber Ber Bernie, you, you're in uh, Nebraska right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so Bernie, um, when can I come down there and do a tr uh, do a training session with you, man? Because, you know, I'll pull up, man. I I'll come down there on a Saturday. We can film it and stuff. You know, I definitely want to do a training set. And my, and my son been asking about you. He want me to uh, send him down there and train with you. So, you know, I definitely want to pull up, man, and, you know, come down there. I ain't never been to Nebraska. So I definitely like to come down there and train with you and stuff. You know, have some fun and stuff. Just train, get in shape. You know. Yeah, well, you need to get a lot of shape. You look like you're a little overweight, big boy. Huh? I said you look like you're a little overweight, big boy. You need to I, get in a little I, shape. I, I wasn't, man. It was, it was motherfucking COVID, man. Shit, I was at the gym on a regular basis, but you know, I'm, I, I'm getting back. I'm about to get back the next time you see me, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna lose twenty pounds, man. I'm not gonna crumble cookie no more, man. I rebuke it. So you know, <laughs> so you know what I'm saying. I, I, I rebuke crumble cookie, man. So you know, I'm I'm done with it. You, you know, but yeah, Bernie, I'm ready to come down there, man. I got the gloves on, and everything, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on. Who, this Who this Chris V motherfucker? Hold on. Said technically, oh. Bud had the easy, had an easier route at one point seven. Earl Earl had three belts and Bud had one. Evidently, one had a temper. Time at one forty-seven and the other. I'm just referring to resumes and who they fuck. Chris B, you don't know a fucking thing. Shut your bitch ass up. I'm glad I'm watching this shit now. Your bitch ass. Go ahead, bro. Go ass. ahead. Who the fuck was? Who the fuck? Like I say, Chris B, what your bitch ass at? Who the fuck was? Who, who got beat besides an old Pacquiao? Who did? Who the fuck? Who the fuck? Danny Garcia beat at one forty-seven. Who the fuck? Danny Garcia beat at one forty-seven. Who the fuck Mikey Garcia be there at 147? Tell me that. Tell me that. Now, Sean Porter fought everybody, but who did Sean Porter beat at 147? Come on now. Like I say, these guys, Jeff Horn was the leaning on champion. He beat Manny Pacquiao, a fresher Manny Pacquiao than Uga. A fresher, he was bullying uh, Pacquiao. He definitely wasn't having his weight. You know, and uh, Uga and Pacquiao have been sitting out two, two, two years before he fought Uga. So come on, man. Like I say, this is another hate motherfucker. And <laughs> you know, I mean shit, come on. Easier route. Bud fought. He beat the stew out of Sean Porter. Now he just beat the fuck out of Earl Spence though. So what that say? What that say? He beat the hell out of Brooke. Way easier than uh way easier than Spence. Now when it's Spence fought Brooke, Brooke was coming from a weight loss, and then he was coming from a, a ass whooping. That's when you fought him. Y'all didn't give him no rest. He didn't have no in-between time or nothing. He had to come straight from you to you. Come on now. Come on. When we had him, he was coming off a three-fight win streak. And, and come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so see what I'm saying? Philly motherfuckers like that. Shut your bitch ass up. He had an easier time. Okay. 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 Chris B. Stupid motherfucker. You, they, they they forgot, Bernie. Y'all tried to fight all them dudes. Y'all tried to fight Danny Garcia. You tried to fight Ugas. You tried to fight them dudes. I mean, how, and listen, man, I'm going to say this and I'm going to let Bernie cook in. How many fucking times I got to tell y'all, man? They offered Danny Garcia $3 million to fight Bud. He took a million two to fight Adrian Granados. Still, still don't want to fight the dude, man. What, like, for real? He, they Damn. tried to fight these dudes. Remember, they was on the other uh, side of the street. Whatever the, I don't uh, know, two 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 seven, the the last house on the left. Whatever, I don't know. Whatever that shit is, they was making up with. I don't know, man. What's the name? Uh, 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 man, shit, man. Come on, De uh, Danny Garcia was the mandatory. Boots was the mandatory. WBO mandatory. They ain't take the fight. Why they ain't take the fight? Wasn't one was Virgil was Ortiz in a running two, and he just he elected not what? to get all three of them. They went they went in succession. They went from Danny Garcia to to Virgil Ortiz to this guy to to Boots, and they all passed it up. Hey hey, in the words of Baby, all three of them. So all three of them. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else want some? Anybody any any anybody anybody else want some? You know all well, you know that. They know that. They know that. They know that. 
but they still refuse to act like they don't know that. They know that. He said Errol Smith had a harder. Okay, well, I don't know. Hey, whatever, man. <laughs> okay, again, like I say, that fella had. Okay, you know, Danny Garcia. They was the more popular fighters. I agree with that because they was on regular television. They was on Fox Television, and it was a new series, and everybody was fucking with the series. And they got introduced to those guys through the regular television. And you know what I mean? It was on Fox. It wasn't on HBO. It wasn't on Showtime. You could watch this shit just like you watch the football game. So, of course, those guys became more popular. All right. But at the same time, that don't mean they was no better. Like I say, that don't mean they was no better. I mean, in the fights that they fought, the best two guys on, on his own, on Earl Spence's resume, Bud whooped them worse and then whooped him worse. Come on. Come on. Okay, um, Chase, uh, Bob, Chase, want to know why was Ugas in his prime cut by a top rank? I don't think he knows any of that kind of stuff. Because Ugas was a fucking buck. He used that Cuban refugee shit that that shit that everybody did because he's Cuban, he's good. That ain't true. Ugas was a decent fighter. He wasn't no Olympic medalist. He didn't get no medal. I don't think he didn't medal. I mean, he was a good fighter. Cuban got some good talent. But he wasn't the top of just like Bartholomew. And them guys, them guys ain't the ones. Them guys ain't Regan Dallas. Them guys ain't Casamayors. Those guys, ain't, them ain't those guys. Them ain't those guys. They Cuban fighters, but they ain't those guys. They more like Gia Baby Sortado type of guy, you know? And uh, so, I mean, Ugas was a decent fighter, but come on, man. Ugas didn't beat nobody. His best win was... Uh, What's the fella's name? Uh, the old champion, Figueroa. That was his best win. He looked at that was his best performance. Was against Figueroa. Come on. Okay. I'm lying. Tell me when I'm lying. Tell me when I'm lying. Nah, Tell you. Me when I'm lying. You not lying. Tell me when Ugas I'm lying. Ugas was just an eight round fighter. Ugas was overhyped because of PBC. Okay, one yeah. dude says, Tone Def says, Bernie, do you want Spence to take a rematch after that whooping? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, like I said, I just told him. I think it, you know, I think it's what he can do. You know, I think it's the higher weight again, and uh, the, not no pressure on him. And uh, I think he can definitely, uh, I think it's something he can do. Uh, I mean, you had, I uh, uh, know, but. Yeah, that, that boy was leaking, man. I mean, Arrow was bleeding out of everywhere. He bleeding out his ears, bleeding out his nose, bleeding out of I ain't seen nobody take that kind of punishment in a while. And I was just thinking to myself, that boy better sit. I mean, that boy better sit. And I mean, I was just like like looking at the fight. And you know the thing is, Bud is so quick. When y'all knocked him down like the, the second time, I didn't even know Bud threw like a quick uppercut. He threw like a quick uppercut. Spence froze and was on his way down from the uppercut. And then Bud hit him with that chopper right. Oh, like I thought it was the chopper right, but it was actually when they showed it from another angle, Bud came with a quick uppercut. I mean, Bud had I mean Bud showed what was in his tool toolbox. Bud was like I don't know, man. Bud was like a mechanic in that. I mean, for real, Bud was like a, a high level mechanic, man. I'm talking about. I'm talking about. He had like all his tools was made out of platinum. The way Bud fought in that fight, man. <laughs> yeah, Bud. Yeah, hey, Bud like changed his name to the mechanic, man. The way he was just like. I'm talking about. I just never saw Bud. That was like the most focused I ever saw. Bud came out with the fishnet. Came out with Eminem too, uh, and and that surprised the fuck out of everybody when he came out the Eminem. Did did you yeah. know that was coming, Bernie, or did you was just surprised as everybody else when you saw Eminem walk up in there? No, no, I knew that. I knew that, but he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't, he, he met him like somewhere else. Eminem so fancy. He didn't come with us in the dressing room like where everybody could see him and meet him. He he went on on Bud way out. He met him on the way out somewhere. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think that uh, that was nice. You know, uh, it was something different, you know, especially being in the black community. You never see uh, Eminem walk out with nobody. And nobody really listened to Eminem, but he's such a yeah, I know. Star. <laughs> <You> know? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm saying, you know, in the black community, again, you know, we're not really bumping on Eminem. You know, again, he's a global star. And, you know, he got that type of population behind him. 
And uh, he is great at what he do, no doubt about that. He's a, a, all that stuff. But again, you know, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, you know, it's like a respect thing. Like Bud said, you show what level I'm on. You know, these are the guys who admire me. You know what I mean? So. Um, you know, shit. Hey, hey, Bernie, I'm thanks for that sound bite. I've been saying that. Listen, I'll respect Eminem, but yeah, for real, man. Um, Nobody, man, we stopped bumping Eminem in Oakland like back in 2003 and stuff. So, you, you know, we listened to our two shorts, our E-40s. Um, and then we listened to a lot of Detroit rap. We listened to Sada Baby and T Grizzly. We, you know, listened to a lot of Ice Cube and stuff, you know, listen to that, that dirty sound. We can really relate to but this song, that song was perfect for that moment. You know, that song was perfect for that moment. Yeah, Bernie, I'm going to have to rewind that. I'm going to have to rewind this too, you know, later on, because I'm definitely going to use that for a sale, buddy. That's going to, hey, I'm, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Bernie. Hey, so there you guys what? have it, though. Soundbite so, Bernie, for Bernie, Bernie verified. Soundbite for what? Hey, soundbite for what? No, I'll just, you know, I'll just was having some, um, you know, we have a lot of discussions about hip hop and Eminem and that kind of stuff. And, you know, what his place is in hip hop. Um, I always thought Eminem was a good rapper. But, you know, like I said, he have a certain following and that's cool. But, you know, people just don't play him in certain places. So, you know, that was just, you know, I'm glad you said some light on that. Basically, that's the same thing I've been saying. So, you know, but that, they, I mean, yeah, yeah, but again, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, the, for the moment in the time, it was perfect. You know, it, would have been, it, was, it was a lot. It, it stayed off different because if he would have came out with uh, somebody regular like everybody expected, that would have been, that would have been, it, it, for the moment, for the occasion, uh, it was perfect. Like I say, Eminem, that song is a, everybody can relate to that. You know what I mean? I used to, actually, that was one of my songs when uh, I lost my old lady when she quit me. That was one of my songs. Uh, I used to be on the radio every time, and uh, I really, I really, uh, I really, uh, 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 you know, related to that song. So I feel like, um, you know, again, you know, Eminem, he got some shit. You know, I fuck with Eminem. Now, I ain't gonna say that I fuck with Eminem, but I ain't just gonna throw him on. You know what I mean? He ain't gonna be in my regular rotation, but I fuck with Eminem for sure. You know, so I think for the moment and. Uh, the different, uh, being different, I think that was that was a great. The way he did, it was perfect. You couldn't have gotten. No, nah, it was it was dope. It was dope. It was it, it was eccentric. I mean, it was yeah. some. It was something. That, like I said, it fucked everybody up because it was funny, Bernie. To, when y'all was like making y'all way to the ring, and people saw Eminem come out, and they saw Bud. I'm talking about. I was at Dave and Buster's, right? So everybody was like, "Oh man, they got Eminem," and like, and then I just saw the look on Bud's face. Bud was in the zone. Yeah. I'm talking about Bud. When I saw, I never saw such a focused man before in my life. And I was yeah. like, I said, yes, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Hey, hey, you know, Bernie, you know, it's this dude, man. He he won't answer his phone, man. He owe me two racks, man. I've been calling the nigga. He won't, won't pick up his phone. <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to have to go to his house, though. But, you know, I don't want to have to go to his house. But uh, he need to get at me, though. It's another dude that owe me two racks, man. But, you know. I, but yeah, for the most part, man, you Bud provided a lot of film study, man. Like he was just like us, you know what I'm saying? Just watching Bud fight in that particular style, he was so poised. And you know, the thing is, I don't know if you know, uh, Bernie, I got some very in interesting statistics for you. Do you know out of all of Bud's opponents at 147, um, Bud had the highest connect rate? Versus uh, any of his uh, eight opponents at uh, 147, he had like a 51 percent connect rate. He landed. Uh, you guys landed 185 punches out of um, whatever is half of um, 185, you know, divided by 185. So, yeah, those numbers are startling. And every every walk of uh, athletics. Sometimes some games are better. You know, Kobe scored 81. You know, George scored 65 in the game. Will Chambers scored, uh, scored uh, 100 points. So, you know, it's just another good thing in sports. You know, uh, and some and somebody else will uh, surpass that or equal that. You know, uh, it's, it's not a no surprise to me. And being that Bud, you know, is the best pound for pound. And uh, you can see that, you know, and, and, and it's just in, in all his performances, you can see the IQ. 
you can see the level that he was at. You know, that's why they gave him that crown. You understand? Uh, he was already uh, counted as crown for crown of best fighter in the world. So, you know, for him to have that, uh, it, it really, it's not that far fetched because again, you know, at the moment, you know, uh, just like Bray coming through, you know, it just, you know, you know, a great athlete, that's what made him great. The way he performed in that situation, in that atmosphere, against that level, that's what proved his greatness right there. Yeah. D D Ray Promotions Omaha <laughs> Run uh, oh, yeah. Forty Seven. Okay, I, I I see you. I see you. Yeah, I see y'all. Yeah, I'm glad y'all giving Bernie his uh and, and Team Crawford their props, man, because they earned it. They went through the fire. They got it from the mud. They did it. That they did it the right way. You know what I'm saying? They did it the All right way. So. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. Everywhere they try to stop it from the beginning, from the start of his career, they, they try to keep that man down. Man. So I'm glad too. He's doing his thing, he's doing his victory lap, he's doing all the, the latest talk shows and radio shows and everything like that. So, yeah, that's where we at with it, man. Victory I'll, lap, baby. Like Nip say, victory lap. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I love that. So, you know, like I said, Bernie, you guys earned it, man. You really earned it. And you deserve your flowers. And I'm glad Bud is starting to get the worldwide recognition that he got and he started to receive. And so, Bernie, one last question before we sign up. I wanted to ask you um, about another guy that they have, like, right behind Bud that said he was number one pound for pound for four days. And that's uh, in a way. Um, what do you think of in a way? And what did you think of his? Did you get to see his performance versus uh, Steve Fulton? And yeah, do you? Do you yeah, think it's ahead. fair that he have the, you know, that he's ranked number two behind you guys? I don't think he's put in enough work. No, no, but I think uh, again he's been ran through a lot of divisions. He became undefeated champion. He beat a lot of good fighters. Uh, uh, he beat a lot of good fighters, and uh, he just beat Stephen Fulton, who I picked to beat him. I thought Fulton had the tools to beat him. I thought Fulton was a bigger guy. I thought he had a a good IQ with boxing, and uh, he just kind of obliterated uh, sportsman. So, um, no, I think it's uh, him, Pusi. I think these guys are top tier guys. I think they proved their worth. They've been great and dominant in what they're doing, and I think that uh, so it's just a great race, you know. But uh, I think definitely Bud uh, is the all around guy. Um, being that I think he's been a little bit in the at the top longer than he now you. And uh, he's he he, he knocked uh, more people out than than, than than Uzi. So I think that those things uh, keep him right above those guys. Just 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 in here. Okay. Hey, well, Bernie. Um, when is your next show? And I want everybody to tap in with Bernie. Bernie, can you plug everything, all your social media sites, and let them know when is the next Bernie show? Cause I'm definitely gonna be tapping in. Well, I'm on vacation until Monday, so you know I'm on vacation till Monday. I go back to work either Monday or Tuesday, so I got a yeah, few I'm days. So I'm definitely. Uh, 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 you know where I'm at, man. It's Bernie the Boxer. You can catch me on Instagram at Bernie T H A Boxer. Uh, YouTube at Bernie T H A Boxer. You know that's that's where I'm at. You catch me uh, uh, on Tuesday, Thursday, or or uh, uh, Sunday. You know that's usually my days that I go, and so. Uh, you just get the notification. If you sign up, you uh, subscribe to my channel. You're going to get the notification and, uh, you know, just follow me in. Like I say, none that I do is scripted. None that I do is set up or planned, even though uh, I'm always constantly thinking. So I'm the type of guy that's the uh, fly guy. I try to go on the fly a lot. And so, like I say, I got three different days. I got a Tuesday I can go up, Thursday I can go up, or a Sunday I can go up. But, uh, you know, yeah, that's where I'm at. Bernie, T-H-A, Boxer, my cash app at Bernie, T-H-A, Boxer. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, Bernie, man, when you going to let me help you with the uh, with the channel, man, so we can start getting you paid, man? I know. Uh, that's, I know, I know, I know. Start. Man, call me, man. Call me uh on Friday, bro. We finna get you monetized, bro. Cause you you losing, th man. You losing too much money, man. So we gotta get you monetized, man. You been? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, town. Well, man, I appreciate you.
All right, Bernie, man. I'll, I'll see you at the next fight, hopefully, man. Hopefully, hopefully the PBC stop fucking with me and start uh, credentialing me, man. You know, but <laughs> appreciate you, bro. Love, man. I appreciate you. One, one love. Okay.